Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on calculating energy changes in chemical reactions. And it's worth noting um, that this is higher tier material. So if you're a foundation tier student, there's no point watching this because it will not be assessed in your exams. Now, before you watch this video, make sure that you're confident on chemical symbols and formulas, how to balance chemical equations, um, covalent bonding, and the difference between exo and endothermic chemical reactions. Now, in this video, we're going to start off by looking at what we mean by the term bond strength and then we're just going to work through lots of examples of how to calculate the energy change in a chemical reaction. Okay so what is bond strength? Bond strength is the amount of energy required to break a covalent bond and we usually give it in units of kilojoules per mole i.e. the energy required to break one mole of the particular bonds that we're talking about. Now Bond strength values are always endothermic because we're talking about breaking bonds. And when you pull two atoms apart, you have to put energy in them to do that to overcome the, their attraction to each other. And we can see a whole range of different bond strengths here, ranging from um, very, very strong bonds like the carbon oxygen double bond at 804 kilojoules per mole down to much weaker bonds like the chlorine chlorine single bond at only 242 kilojoules per mole. Now to calculate the energy change of a reaction it's really straightforward. All we do is we add up the strength of all of the bonds in the reactants and we take away the strength of all of the bonds in the products and doing that will give us our overall energy change of the reaction. And what this means that is that if the products contain stronger bonds the reaction is exothermic and so the answer will be negative and equally if the products contain weaker bonds the reaction will be endothermic and the answer will be positive. So what we're going to do now over the next few slides is look at a few worked examples of these. Worked example number one calculate the energy change in kilojoules per mole for the reaction below. Um, this is a typical kind of question layout so you'll be given a um, full displayed formulas showing all of the bonds for your reactants and products and you'll be given a table like this giving the bond energies for each of those bonds. You will never need to memorize the bond energies, you'll always be given the data that you need in the question. So let's have a look at this. Um, to calculate our, our um, energy change, that is going to be the sum of our reactant bonds. subtract the sum of the product bonds. So what are the bonds in our reactants? In our reactants you can see we've got one hydrogen hydrogen bond. So we're going to say one times hydrogen hydrogen. And we've also got one chlorine chlorine bond. So I'm going to add that on as well. So one times chlorine chlorine. And I'm going to put brackets around that because that's the um, that's the sum of my reactant bonds there. And then we'll do the same for the sum of the product bonds. So in the products, I've just got two HCl bonds. So I'm going to say two times HCl. So what I'll do now is I'll substitute with the values from the table. So my hydrogen hydrogen bond is going to be one times 436. And then I'm going to add on one times. 242 for the CLCL bond. Put my brackets back in. And then I'm going to subtract two lots of the HCL bond. So 2 times 431. Okay. So I'll do this step by step on my calculator. I know it's tempting to whack everything in in one big long chain. Um, that can be fine if you're really confident that you've got your brackets in the right place, you've worked your order of operations properly. I think it's better to do it in steps because it just makes it less likely that you'll make a mistake. So um, for if we do the sum of our reactants, that will come up to 678. And we're going to subtract the sum of our products, which comes to 862. So now if we do 678, subtract 862, we get a final answer of minus 184 kilojoules per mole. Just like that. Okay, now let's look at example two. Calculate the energy change in kilojoules per mole 
for this reaction. So we are going to say that the energy change equals the sum of the reactant bonds subtract the sum of the product bonds. Okay. Now again, we've got this um, full displayed equation showing all the bonds involved. Um, it's more complex than the last one, but we'll work through the same process. So for our reactants, first of all, we've got one, two, three of these carbon-carbon single bonds. So I'm going to say three times carbon-carbon single bond. And then I'll add on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So plus ten lots of the carbon-hydrogen single bond. Okay. Then let's do the same for my product bond. So I'm going to take away, let's have a look. I've got one carbon-carbon single. So I'm going to say one times carbon-carbon single, like that. I've also got one carbon-carbon double bond here. Okay, So I have one times C double bond C. Although it's a double bond, it still only counts as one in terms of what we're putting into our calculation. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carbon-hydrogen single bonds. So plus 10 times carbon hydrogen like that. So that's all the bonds involved and now I'm just going to substitute and replace the bonds with their strengths. So rather than saying 3 times CC we're going to say 3 times 3, 4, 6 because that's the strength of carbon carbon. So 3 times 3, 4, 6 plus 10 times 4, 1, 4 for the carbon hydrogen and then I'll subtract 1 times 3, 4, 6 for the carbon-carbon single, plus 1 times 6, 1, 4 for my carbon-carbon double bond, and lastly, 10 times 4, 1, 4 again for my 10 carbon hydrogens. Now, if I do that, um, what I can see is that my reactants will come up to a total of 4,350 kilojoules per mole and my product comes to 4,272 kilojoules per mole and so my final answer is 78 kilojoules per mole and note that because this is a positive answer this is an endothermic reaction. Now um, the more mathematically aware of you might be able to see that there are some shortcuts you can take here but they can be a little bit risky um, if you don't feel super confident. So because we've got 10 carbon hydrogen bonds on the left and 10 on the right we could just cancel those out because you know they, they have no overall effect on the calculation and equally i've got three carbon carbons on the left and one on the right so if i cancel out the one on the right and replace that three with a two i could simplify this whole calculation to just two carbon carbons take away uh, one carbon carbon double bond that is a quicker and more elegant approach but it does require you to be more confident. So if you're not confident with that cancelling, just do it the long way. Um, you're not going to gain or lose marks either way. Okay, so example number three. Calculate the energy change in kilojoules per mole for this reaction between um, methane and oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And again, we're going to use the data in the table here. We don't need to memorise that data because we'll always be given what we need. So let's write out our equation to start with. So we can say the energy change, the energy change equals the sum of the reactant bonds. Take away the sum of the product bonds. Okay, so let's unpack our equation now then. So for our reactants, we've got four of these carbon hydrogen single bonds. So I'm going to say four times carbon hydrogen single bonds. And we're going to add on two of these oxygen oxygen double bonds. So plus two times oxygen oxygen like that. Okay. Then for our products, 
we've got in the carbon dioxide, we've got two of these carbon oxygen double bonds. So we say two times C double bond O. And we've got four of these oxygen hydrogen single bonds. So we say four times O H. Okay. If you wrote that the other way around and wrote H O, that would also be absolutely fine. Um, now let's substitute our bonds for some actual numbers. So our four times C H is going to become four times four one four for C H. Uh, like that. And then we're going to add on two times the 498 for the oxygen oxygen double, like that. Close our brackets and subtract on the other side two times 804 for the carbon oxygen double, and then four times. Now I haven't got an OH, but I have got an HO. They're just the same thing written backwards. So that is going to be four times 463. For the um, OH. So don't worry if you write your bond backwards, it's still the same thing. Now let's add those up with the calculator. Remember, I think it's better to do this in steps rather than stick it all into the calculator in one big go because it's very easy to make a mistake and just not notice it if you do that. So my reactant side comes to 2652, and my product side comes to 3460. And that gives me an overall um, energy change for the reaction of minus 808 kilojoules per mole. And that is a strongly negative value, which shouldn't be surprised because we know that burning methane gives out lots of energy. Now, on the previous slide, I mentioned how you could cancel things sometimes um, to simplify the calculation. Because we don't have any bonds on either side, that are shared, that they've got in common, there is no cancelling you can do here. So you do have to use that full long method. Okay, example number four, calculate the energy change in kilojoules per mole for this reaction. Now, this is a harder example because sometimes they are not going to give you the full displayed formulas and you've got to work them out yourself. They're just giving you the molecular formulas here. So we've got CH4 and Cl2 making CH3Cl plus HCl, and we need to figure out the structures for each of those before we can do our calculation. So let's start by looking at methane. Methane is CH4. We should know that that has carbon in the middle with four hydrogens arranged around the outside. That is one of the compounds that you are required to know on the course. Equally, Cl2, we should be able to work out that that is two chlorine atoms joined by a single bond like that. Chlorine is in group seven, so it only forms single covalent bonds. And we're gonna make CH3Cl. Now you haven't met that before, but we can work out its structure because we've still got the three hydrogens arranged around the carbon like that. And so the chlorine must just be bonded there like that. There's no scope for it to be a double bond or anything like that because such a thing does not exist. But also, if we look at the bonds available in our data table, we've only got single bonds. So that's a pretty big steer as to what the structure might be. And then equally for the hydrogen chlorine bond, we should know that its structure is this hydrogen and chlorine joined by a single bond. And again, we've got that there. We've got a single bond HCl. So that's a good steer as to what the kind of bonds might be present. Now, then we just do our calculation. Once we've worked that out, and that would be at least a mark in the exam, we can then just do our calculation as normal. So we can say that the energy change, energy change equals the sum of the reactant bonds. Take away the sum of the product bonds. And that will look like this. So for our reactants, we've got one, two, three, four carbon hydrogen. So you can say four times carbon hydrogen. And we've also got one chlorine chlorine. So one times Cl Cl. And then for our products that we're subtracting, we can have three of our carbon hydrogens. So we can say 
3 times carbon hydrogen and 1 carbon chlorine. and also one hydrogen chlorine bond. Okay, so what we do now then is we um, substitute. So instead of four carbon hydrogens, we're gonna say four times 414, because that is the strength of that bond. So four times 414. Then we add on one times 242 for the ClCl. And then on the other side, we can do rather than three times CH, we can do three times 414 because that was our CH. And then one times CCL, so that is 324. And for the HCL, we've got one times 431. Okay, so if I add that up, on the left, that comes to 1,898. And on the right, that comes to 1,997. Um, and therefore, that gives us an overall energy change for the reaction of minus 99 kilojoules per mole. So again, that is an exothermic reaction. Now, we've mentioned a couple of times about cancelling things to simplify our calculations. We can do that here, because if we look on the left and on the right, we've got these carbon-hydrogen bonds so we've got three on the right and four on the left. So if I cancel out those three and just make that one carbon hydrogen, that just simplifies that, that calculation a little bit for us and can save us a little bit of time in the exam. But only do that if you're really confident with your mathematics. Okay, so let's look at our last example, which is um, to calculate the energy change for this reaction here, which is propane reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And again, we're not given our displayed formulas, so we would need to draw those out first. I suspect this is harder than anything they could ask you in the exam. So if you can do this, you can do anything. Now, propane, we are supposed to know this structure, but if we're not, if you're not sure, it is this. So we're gonna say propane C3, so three carbons, surrounded by the eight hydrogens, like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, oxygen, O2, we should know is oxygen, oxygen with a double bond like that. I'm gonna draw all five of them in because being able to see all five bonds really helps me um, when I'm adding up my bonds later. The same with the carbon dioxide. We should know that carbon dioxide has a carbon in the middle with two double bonded oxygens like this. And I'm gonna draw all three of those in to make it easier to count up my bonds later. And we'll do the same with water. So we've got our O in the middle with two H's. Doesn't matter if you get the shape right. Um, it's just a bit of a habit for me now. So if you want to draw it as a straight line, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, so there are my four waters. Now, I'm going to get stuck straight into doing the calculation. I'm not going to write out the equation because I'm going to run out of space if I do that. Um, but we know now that it's the um, reactants taken by the product. So I'm going to say the energy equals... or the energy change rather, equals. And let's do all of our reactant bonds first. So in that propane, that C3H8, I've got eight of these carbon hydrogen single bonds. So I'll say eight times CH. I've also got two of these carbon carbon singles. So plus two times CC. And I've also got five of these oxygen oxygen doubles. So plus five times O double bond O. And then I'm gonna subtract my products. So I've got these carbon oxygen double bonds, six of them. So I'm gonna say six times C double bond O. And also these oxygen hydrogen bonds. Um, and I've got eight of those. So I'm gonna say eight times oxygen hydrogen like that. OK, it doesn't matter that some are written HO and others are written OH. They are the same thing. So let's substitute my values in for each of those bond strengths. So for the carbon hydrogen, I'm going to say eight times 414 for that. Then I'm going to add on two times 
CC, well, the CC bond is 346 kilojoules per mole, so 346. Then I'll add on five times the oxygen, oxygen double, which is 498. So that's all of my reactant substitution. Now we'll do the same thing for my products. So I'm going to say six times 804 for the carbon oxygen double. So um, six times 804. And then eight times, now there's no OH written, but there is HO and they're the same thing. So eight times 463 for the hydrogen oxygen bond. If I add all that up, that gives me on my reactant side, 6,494 kilojoules per mole. And on the product side, 8,528 kilojoules per mole. And so if I subtract that from the first one, that gives me a final answer of minus 2,034 kilojoules per mole. So a very, very strongly exothermic reaction. Okay, so that's it, the end. As always, thank you for listening and well done if you got this far.